Welcome to Global Comics Safari. This week we're doing a special. We're having some audience participation and sharing some foreign comic collector pickup uh, moments. They're going to share some of their favorites of some of the members of the community. Um, so come check them out with us and we'll discuss uh, what they've got to say. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. John Z, as always, and with me is Define Triple Nine, Matt Roybal, the uh, foreign comic uh, OG. And we're going to talk about some uh, pickups within the community. First, I just wanted to share a couple things. Uh, as we usually talk about, please give some love to our friends at Comic Barricade. They are the best way to support your comics, keep them from getting the dreaded spine crease and falling over the box. Also a good way to separate them if you need to separate when you get all these weird foreign sizes that don't fit anywhere else. And we've got a very special announcement today. Uh, our friends at Parallel Urban have uh, a brand new release of variants coming out that we want to share with you. They are the... Uh, Incred or the Immortal Hulk one trade. It is um, three different versions. There is the Green Hulk, which is limited to 500. There is the Gray Hulk, limited to 500. And the Sketch variant that is limited to 250. These are all by Sinar. You'll You'll, Yildri Sinar, who we've talked to a few times, he's got that amazing Server Surfer variant, as well as um, a Batman Rebirth and several others that we've talked about. But the coolest thing about this one is this Gray Hulk here glows in the dark. Oh! They're all shit. homage to the famous Steranko giant size Hulk, but it's glow in the dark. Oh my God! So, 500 of those bad boys. That's, that shit's awesome, dude. These are Turkey exclusives through Marvel. The white is actually a parallel Evren um, variant as well um, by themselves. But uh, you can order them on the eBay. We will throw a link in the bio so that you can check it out. Show him some love. Again, they're limited to 500, 500, and 250. I don't know who doesn't want to glow in the dark Steranko based Hulk. It is crazy. I have ordered That's several because I know my kids are going to claim a few to put on the wall because <laughs> why not? Uh, he even sent us a cool picture of how they put the graphic on. It's got the, the standard four uh, layer printing, you know, the, the cyan magenta um, and all that good stuff, but it's a fifth layer to make it glow in the dark. So yeah, I am excited, man. That's a cool, that's a cool freaking book, man. I, I do not see these lasting long on eBay. So if you want one or two or three, your ass better be getting the Parallel Urban on eBay. Now, I will, I will say these are trade paperback size. They contain the first five issues of Immortal Hulk, as well as uh, the Avengers story of the start of that run. So it is a big boy book. It's not a, a small floppy. But, man, I'm going to put one of these bad boys in a frame and on the wall because I haven't seen glow-in-the-dark variants since – you know, the old 90s days with, like, the Ghost Rider and yeah, uh, the, Ghost the Rider. Venom covers, man. Yeah. This is, this is cool. I I say you are the man, sir, for coming up with something so awesome. I look forward to seeing him. You will for sure see him in a pickup when I get him. Ilka. Ilka taking it to the next level, man. Ilka. He's a good dude over at Parallel, and he is going to uh, hopefully do a little show with us some point in time. Yes, we got an interview with Ilka. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're just trying to work on the details and all that stuff. But uh, ever wonder what it's like to run a comic shop in Constantin Constantinople or Istanbul? <laughs> Oops, sorry. Yeah, it I'm, thinking of, I'm, think, I'm thinking of the uh, the they might be giant song. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's Istanbul. You ever Istanbul. wonder what it's like to 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 uh, run a comic shop in Istanbul? Well, watch our show. You'll find out. That was crazy, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I, can't believe, I can't believe I did that. That is it sounded crazy. it sounded good though. So we we always do pickup specials at the round table. 
but we opened it up to the community, the Foreign uh, Comic Collectors Magazine group, and we got some cool responses. So I'm, I'm looking forward to them. I've watched a few, but not all of them. We've got uh, some regulars you see, as well as a pretty uh, a pretty big guest that comes in at the end. So yes, should yes. we should we get on to the first video? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Matt, I'll let Ready? you take control. We're gonna start with Ronnie. Hello, Global Comic Safari. Big Ronnie here. How are you? Wanted to come to you today and talk about Spider-Man number one, 1990, McFarlane's Pose and the foreign editions. So as some of you know, I have a monster SM1 collection. I like to call it the biggest in the multiverse. Uh, Tony helped school me on some stuff back in the day. I've been collecting it about four years now on the foreign page. I like sharing my stuff. And today we're here talking about what I consider the rarest SM1 foreign, and that is the UK edition. Now, this is the normal UK edition. You see it comes with a patch taped to the cover. It's a pretty good copy. It, this, I believe, reprints either the first three or the first five SM1 torment stories and this is fairly common. You find it online. You can get this for about 30, 40 bucks. Decent book. I'm definitely going to get this uh, signed and graded the next time McFarlane comes around. But this same cover without the detail in the patches is what we're here talking about today. And that is the UK Amiga version. So you see it's very similar to the regular UK version, but we have blank areas on the cover and what's cool about this book is that it was folded in half and stuffed in video game boxes in 1990 in germany italy france and the uk now print run is very hard to say on this book i've seen detailed uh 3000 3500 uh print run on the video games i've never seen anything on the book itself but what's interesting about this guy is that it was folded in half and stuffed inside the video game boxes. So high grades are very, very tough to come up, come by. This is my, this is the first of three copies I'm going to show you guys. This is the most recent one that I got and it's in great shape. You really can't see any fold near Spider-Man's knee on the left there. And here's the box that it came in. This was the video game. Amazing Spider-Man, and you could see the Italian sticker right there on the cover. It basically says free comic inside. So inside here was a poster. It was the comic folded in half. It was the video game. It was a mail-away card for the manual and things like that. So this was a pretty cool item. There were seven or eight different versions of this. There was Amiga, Atari ST, Commodore, DOS, and PC IBM in a bunch of different languages. So all together, there's at least a dozen different boxes of this that all came with the, with the video game inside. Now, here's my copy of that book. The first copy that I got of it, it's a CBCS 9.0, which for a book that was folded in half and stuffed inside video game boxes is pretty darn terrific. So this is the only graded copy of this book that exists. Uh, CGC has none. This is the only CBCS. I showed it to Tim at Terrificon two years ago. His eyes lit up, and he couldn't wait for me to send it in and submit it. And I'm very happy with the grade that it got as the only uh, graded copy. And I know I'll take it. But here's the real gem, the real unicorn. I'm not sure we'll ever see one of these again. This is a UK version of the game that the comic came inside, sealed and graded. So when I got this, I reached out to vote both VGA and WATA and tried to see if they either of them had graded one before. They both told me no. So to date, this is the only sealed graded copy and it got a 90 point 90 plus which is their version of a 9.8 so i'm not sure we'll ever come across another one of these in our lifetime and i'm very happy to say i have it uh i got it for a song i think it was 250 and another 50 or 60 for grading it's an absolute bargain i wouldn't sell it for 10 times that 
And this is one of those books that I say book, but I'm holding a graded video game. It's funny. Uh, this is one of those books that uh, I, I'm probably going to be buried with, uh, along with my platinum Spider-Man number one graded and my gold UPC that I bought as a childhood collection book as a kid. But I'm very happy to talk about those books. I'm sorry we're a little over. Matt, sue me. And Big Ronnie out. <laughs> I mean, holy God, I didn't know that existed. And all I can say is, wow. I mean, I'm, and, you know, the video game market is bonkers right now. Uh, you add that to a comic and a, and a you know, kind of freaking fold it in half. I, all I can think is I want them all now. And I didn't know it existed not very long ago. <laughs> That that Amiga Spider-Man McFarlane book is a foreign edition, of course, like you said, only printed for the UK and a couple countries in Europe. I didn't even know about that until around, like he was saying, Tony Pamilla had talked to him about it. Around that same time, Tony and I had talked about it. I had never known it existed. That is the rarest of all of those Spider-Man 1 McFarlane foreign editions. Rarer than the Turkish ones, rare, rarer than all of them. And it's like he's got a graded game, Ronnie, I, big Ronnie. Oh man, that, I think at 10 times over what he paid, he's underselling that thing, honestly. I mean, the way the market for games is going, yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost got it all right. It's got the rare comic in it, it's got a rare game, probably sealed. Um, for the Spider Man collector that needs everything, good luck. Not, I mean, did he say Commodore? I'm pretty yeah. sure he said Commodore in there. <laughs> yeah, this is old, dude. This was back when people were still playing on Commodore, man. Oh man, that's that's an amazing book. I, sir, I salute Ronnie. You are the king. I will, I will go home and cry for a while. Yeah, that he he has specified that he is the king of Spider-Man McFarlane ones, and I think. Because his collection's massive. With the collection, we, we, we talk about jewel. We talk about people realizing how rare some of these things are. That sealed game, though, that mm -hmm. truly could go for money. The rest of us don't understand because the video game yeah. market is crazy. You add it to yeah. McFarlane and Spider Man. That that is a book that, or well, that is a, 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 a item that uh, is five figures is is very achievable. And maybe now, if not, yeah, in a year. Yeah, Ronnie wasn't wasn't fucking around. He he showed us a big big deal. Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, we're all just gonna cry in bed tonight. <laughs> that's freaking amazing. That's all I gotta yeah. say. Yeah, I was like that. That's a good one to start off the show. That's why we gave him extra time. All right, what you yep. got next? Okay, let's go to the next one. Let me cue it up here. Crises on Earth on Instagram. His video um, got cut a little bit. Quick, little CPV run for you. I know foreign guys don't get. Quite so excited about CPVs. Uh, they're just the U.S. books with a different uh, cover price. But as we know from the Star Wars and Iron Fist books from the 70s, that's a that's a thing. And these are hard to come by. They're only sold on newsstands in Canada. Um, I've been working really hard on these runs. Um, two of, of Daredevil's and Batman's best runs. Certainly, some of Frank Miller's best stuff um, fall right into the window. And uh, it's taken me a while to get these, um, and I'm really proud of them. I just got them back from CGC. Um, Batman 404 9.6. There's one higher 405. This has been my hardest one. Um, there's only two higher of these, and there's no 9.8. So apparently, that's a tougher one, which it has been for me. I'm happy with that. Uh, 406 has a 9.6. Um, there's only one higher, and 407 also 9.6. There's only one higher. Um, really rare. And when I say, um, you know, one higher and talk about the census, there's like 10 of each of these books maybe on on the CGC census right now. Um, they've only been counting CPVs for a bit. Um, so the numbers don't really fully reflect what's what's already been rated before they were counting them. Um, but but we're talking like certainly less than 5% and then grade super, super high rare. Um, Daredevil Born Again 227. This is the highest. There's one, uh, there's one other. 228, this is the single highest. Um, on the census, 229, single highest, 230, this is a tougher one, I think with a black cover, um, 
this is actually the highest. So there's one other, and there's no 9.6s or 9.8s uh, for now. Uh, 231 highest. There's one other in this grade, and 232, the first nuke. Um, there are three higher. Um, 9.4, still a really nice book, and then uh, 233 highest one other um, in the grade. Um, now to throw some bones for the foreign guys, the hardcore foreign guys. Um, these Batman Year Ones really got me into this, um, and these are kind of the grails. These are the the Tagalog. Um, books, which are in incredible condition. Um, I was, I'm told that there's maybe like 10 sets of these um, out there um, that survive. They're all newsprint um, to survive in this grade and um, and through the tropical environments, really, really something. Um, Batman 404 Thai version. Um, I, I think uh, the Waynes lying in a pool of their own blood was maybe a little too much for the Thai sensors. And then uh, Batman 404 Spanish version. This has a sticker on it, which you never, never find a peel off sticker. Um, and then on the Daredevil side of things, keeping with the Frank Miller scene, um, some really cool uh, EKS uh, Frank Miller books from the 80s. These things are nice and big, um, probably a good inch, inch and a half, two inches wider and, and an inch longer. Um, killer, uh, no more Mr. Mr. Nice Guy classic cover here so those were some crazy um canadian price variants there that he was sharing with us as yeah. well as he said tagalog which maybe not everybody catches what that is that's the philippines edition in uh the tagalog language so those are those are not common by any means no not <laughs> not at often all. when we talk the philippines editions we're talking the ones printed in the philippines in english these are the ones in the native Tagalog. language. Which yep. I don't even then, know how. And this is our buddy William out of Denver. Um, and he has got the year one set on freaking lockdown. Having I've searched for all four of those books. I only got one. Those Tagalog year ones are practically impossible to find. And to have them nice like that, he's he's got the year one set like going on, man. And and those EKS former Yugos, beautiful condition. Yeah, William is uh he's become kind of a major player. Uh he's been finding some great stuff. So I don't chase the price France very often. I mean, if I find one, sure, I'll I'll grab it. It's not my thing. I don't love the price variants. I just not I would rather a unique cover. It's just me because mm -hmm. I want to see the different art. But yep. the American market or the comic market is not ignoring them. The sale that you showed me blew my mind. Look at this. Look at this. A These nine are Canadian eight. price variants. First Go Hobgoblin Canadian price variant. That's 7700 at Heritage. Wow. I that's almost four times the, the newsstand. Yeah. This you know, people people like to say all the time, John, they like to say. You know, it's funny because not that long ago, someone posted some slab forens over at the CGC boards, and some uh, some guys there said, "Oh yeah, those are foreign foreign books. They're cool, but they're it, you know the guy didn't know a whole lot about them, and they were like, yeah, they'll they'll never ever you know command prices that are anywhere near the American originals. I don't agree with that. I think that the that that all of the the true foreign price variants. There's a couple of true foreign price variants. There are the Pences, the UK Pences, the Canadian, and the Aussies. Those you can actually call variants because they were printed at the same time. They are I used to scoff at the variants. Aussies and I now realize they are rare as shit. They are rare as freaking hen's teeth. I mean, the fact that these books are getting are commanding these kind of prices and are getting this kind of respect, I think it kind of proves the point that this, you know, these price variants are like dipping your little toe in the foreign market. Remember, these books were not sold in America. They were sold on newsstands for a foreign country. They were never, never meant to be seen by American eyes in the sense of, you know, the just traditional market. If these books are, are getting these kinds of prices, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's not unreasonable to assume that at some point in the future, and we've already seen it. 
from certain foreign editions in the same grade as the American equivalent will go for this either the same amount or more. And we know with the Filipino 300 that that's the case, right? That's one of the rare, rare times that we can say that a foreign edition actually will go for more money than an American book in, in the same grade. I think that it's only a matter of time. This market is warming up to it. Well, I tell you what, if a 9.8 Italian hit Italian 300, I would pay more than a, than a U.S. one for it. Yeah, and more, people are, and more people are getting to that point. And, you know, I, I, it's only a matter of time until more, the more of these books get in people's eyeballs. And guys like William that, are, that see it and that hunt it, they're making good investments, guys. Yeah. And, and and that's why I want to bring this up. There's a guy by the name of Benjamin Noble. He has a website called rarecomics.wordpress.com. And on that site, they discuss UK pences, Aussie, Aussie price variants, and Canadian price variants. Now, this has been a labor of love for this guy for a long time. They have recently created a Canadian price variant price guide and guide, and they have some big heavy hitters on their team. Tim Bildhauser, uh, as everyone, anyone that knows anything knows that Tim is the uh, international foreign comic expert at CBCS or was. He's no longer with the company, but he was. No one on planet Earth knows more about foreign foreign editions than that guy. And also John McClure. John McClure is the guy that found the 35 cent variants and kind of brought, I think he wrote the first article about 35 cent American books for Overstreet. So there's some big heavy hitters over there at, at their site. And if you're interested in these price variants, go to uh, rarecomics.wordpress.com and go hit up. And through that site, you can find their links to the Canadian price variant website. We'll put them in the links, right, John? Yeah, we'll put it in the description, check it out. Um, for all you youngins that like the DCU variants, this is this is the OG version. This is when you're getting a little a little sicker and a little crazier. This is where you go. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank right. you, William. You rock. What are we queuing up next, Matt? I think we're gonna do Cynthia. Cynthia's cool. She's a chick into foreign comics. Okay, let's uh, let's go there. Hello, fellow comic collectors. Um, my name is Cynthia. Um, this is my review of 2020. Um, 2020 was definitely a difficult year. Um, I had some of my biggest struggles I have ever encountered. Um, but I knew that that was pretty much a story for a lot of people. Um, I don't think anybody saw 2020 coming. Um, just remain hopeful for 2021. Um, definitely trying to be optimistic about it and keeping a good positive outlook for the oncoming year. Um, it did give me a good amount of time to make some new acquaintances across the board though. Um, reaching out to new collectors that I probably never would have came in contact with before. Um, definitely learning that the comic family is very massive. Uh, it, it goes to all corners of the world. Um, biggest accomplishment was actually getting into foreign collecting um, and I finally set my goal on a set and that was the killer joke. Most people have seen me poking around and trying to see who has what and kind of tracking down to see how many there are. Um, definitely a large set so I've got my hands full, something to keep me busy for the time to come. Um, definitely helped pass the time in 2020. Um, do you see behind me I do have Quite a few. Um, nowhere near the finish line. So stay tuned because I don't give up. I do like a challenge. That's why I picked this set. Um, Matt, John, your show is great. I love watching Global Comic Safari. Um, I always learn something new as I'm still a noob when it comes to comic collecting. Have not been in the hobby super duper long, but I fell in love with it immediately and I can't wait to see what else I can find and get my hands on. Um, you guys always keep the show lively. I love the knowledge that you guys bring to the table. And I, I always know who to reach out to when I've got a question. Um, no, there, I've barely ran into anybody rude in the community. Um, everybody's so helpful. 
everybody comes together for the same common goal, love of comics. So if anything's for certain, I know this community is always going to be a stand community. Um, bunch of great guys. Got to try to get our girls more active. We'll get there. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to see what holds. Thank you guys. Keep up the good work. And let's go into 2021. Bye. Okay, so, Fithia. She is a friend of ours. Uh, she is uh, collecting the killing joke. I'm going to go ahead and show an image of her set right now because it's massive. It is massive. She's doing so well. And I laugh when she calls herself a noob because if she's a noob, she's the fastest learning noob I've ever met. Um, I she, mean, she does have a she does have a comic foreign comic junkie friend of ours helping. She does, but see, that's how I see it, right? Like, okay, so this is the metaphor for Cynthia. She called she calls herself a noob, but tackling the killing joke set would be like a noob. So, like a, a I'm a hiker. One of my, my hobbies hiking. I think I'm going to climb Mount Everest, right? It's like, what? Like, There's 14 U.S. versions of that book. Uh, the Killing Joke set is probably one of, if not the biggest set in the foreign edition hobby. So, <laughs> so you know, Cynthia, she's a girl, but she's got balls, man. Cynthia's got balls for tackle. The fucking, the fucking Killing Joke set. And she's good friends with one of our friends that helps her. He's like a Sherpa, right? But they're yeah. still go climbing Mount Everest because Killing Joke sets like climbing Mount Everest. Cynthia, it's been a joy watching you, uh, you know, hang out in, in the group. We don't, you know, and I agree with you. We need to get the girls going. We, I, I mean, we've got two or three other girls that are in the group that collect foreign books. We're gonna, we're gonna see a video of one of them here shortly, and um, I love it. I, I just, it's so cool, and you know the. She, what she talks about speaking to the group is is absolutely correct. You know, the, the foreign community of collectors is wonderful. It, it's wonderful. Thank you, yeah. Cynthia. Very best group on anywhere, honestly. I, I nobody I've seen one person be a douche in the entire time I've been there and he left. Yeah, so. it's it's there's not there's not a lot of you know, it's it's just yeah. There's not a lot of bickery. There's not a lot of and you got to support welcome. each other when you're climbing the mountains we're climbing. And Jesus, yeah. Man, if, if you're talking a global book killing joke, I, I don't even know how many there are. I don't know if anybody knows how many there are. I, I feel like that, that, they, that you and you think you know them all, and then oh, more, more pop more. out. I think someone said it was like it's in the sixty or seventy range. I, I can't even <laughs> imagine. It's freaking insane, though, dude. Yeah. It's insane. Okay. You ready to go to the next one? On to the next one. On to the next one. Thank you, Cynthia. Hello, guys. This is Mikhail from Comics Cauldron. And today I want to show you uh, the best purchase from 2020. Okay. I bought many uh, books. I want to show you some uh, ACM MacBooks. Very hard to find on this condition. I got this uh, Daredevil um, Italian with the uh, first appearance of Ghost Rider. <clears throat> I got uh, this uh, Batman Novaro in very nice condition. But the best one, in my opinion, was this uh, El Sorprendente Hombre Araña 148. Okay, it's a non canon Spidey. Yeah, it's um, Jose Luis Duran cover, and many people call the this cover the Vampirella cover, but it's more than that. Um, this this face, uh, Jose Luis Duran um, used this face 
from Lorena Velázquez. Lorena Velázquez was a very famous Mexican actress from the 70s. She appeared many times with El Santo, and that's why I, I think this was my best purchase from 2020. Okay, it's a hard book to find, and I'm, I'm very happy with it. I want to thank uh, Matt from Global Comic Safari for letting me show you this. And I want to wish you, everyone, Happy New Year. Thank you very much. All I can say is, wow. Um, I know the Macs are tough. I saw that Ghost Rider and was going to buy it, and he snapped it out of my hands quickly. Somebody posted that in the group. So if you're not, join the uh, Foreign Comics Collectors Magazine official group on Facebook. You're missing out on some of the best uh, sales that you're going to see. But that Vampy book, I actually know when he got it. Cause you? Me and another friend. I, I'm pretty sure me and another friend were going to bid on a lot of them. And him and another friend oh. of ours won this lot because they had uh, bigger huevos. Bigger huevos? <laughs> Miguel's got some big huevos, too. I mean, that I, I, I love. I love Mihal. He had sold me my first uh, wedding issue, and I am forever indebted. He got me hooked on the non cannons. I bought several from him. He is a good dude. If you're looking to buy some yeah. rare books, Comet Cauldron on eBay has them. Yes, definitely. I bought some rare books from him. Trusted seller. You can you can count that. There's no shenanigans. Mihal's uh, a good guy, and uh, boy. Um, I'm really jelly of every single one of those books. That 122 that he showed, yeah. the, death of, the Death of the Green Goblin, that's the one of the last ones I need for my 122 set. Um, that uh, uh, The 227 Batman that he had, yeah. very rarely do you see him in that condition. Yeah, that, I, I was like, huh, I wonder what he wants for that one. <laughs> dude, because the problem with that 227 uh, is that when they printed them, they stacked them. And with all that black, there's all kinds of ink transfer. So you usually see all, like just some weirdness with the cover where the, the inks didn't stick. That one is gorgeous. And then, of course, the non-canon. Uh, I didn't know that about uh, the famous actress. El Santo was, I believe, a famous wrestler. But um, that particular book, and you know this, John, that's one of the non-canons that does not pop its pretty little head up very often. No, that's one of the... I have a lot. I don't have them all. But that's one of the few outside of the last five issues that I'm missing. Because that last why. five are rare as heck. I don't know why that one in particular, though, is so hard to find. For some I reason... Cross, cross-pollinated between horror and Spider-Man, and it just is in people's maybe, blood. They've got it. Maybe, maybe, I, I, or maybe, you know, it could be related to a weird print run issue. I don't know. But for some reason, because uh, uh, that one's, I forget what number did he say it was. It's a little bit earlier, right? 148, maybe. 148. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the books around it aren't so hard to find. But that one is hard to find. Killer that, that it's wonky. I find multiple copies of issues next to issues that I've not found a copy of. So. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's definitely a collector market for those that some books just do not leave collections and other ones do. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird right. one. That that was cool books. Let's see who's uh who's next for us. Let's see who's next. I hope the start of 2021 has seen your international comic collecting habits get better, or you find the crazy stuff you've been looking for. I'm Jim Lesniak, member of the Forbes, and this is my contribution that started 2021 with some of my favorite international finds of the last year. In the last 12 months, I have acquired approximately 160 Indonesian horror comics. Uh, I use the term loosely. It's their, uh, their religious comics with horror aspects to them as well as the supernatural and the mystical. What you will find with them is, is in a many types of things, that their covers are better than the interiors. 
the covers. I am loving the composition. I'm not seeing the influences. The last time I enjoyed covers like this, they were the Ghana movie posters. But what you will find are some very garish, bloody, extreme covers. One of my favorite artists, and I believe it's the artist's name, is the Sower, S-O-E-R. Uh, the use of color, the dripping, it is very Rudy Palace in concept and execution, except with a totally, totally foreign to me uh, background in art. This stuff is just inspiring to me and really reignited my desire to collect stuff internationally. Uh, you're going to find in the Indonesian comics, interesting compositions, interesting uses of color, and they are very creative in how they manage to get these things actually published. In addition, you will find a lot of these comics were used for libraries, comics libraries, so that people could go and borrow them and read them. I found a few with the library cards still attached. The most cr crazy, crazy, crazy covers you're going to find are some of these religious style ones. Just think uh, Jack Chick Tracks gone insane. This stuff is phenomenal. The art is crazy in the covers. I buy everything I can find. I'm probably financing someone's house. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> it's almost indescribable. The colors and the activities you find. And these were the religious comics. These were trying to scare you back into the mosque. And in addition to that, I found a lot of Spanish language and non-canon stuff this year. Especially the El Halca Negros. Those are a personal favorite with the Duran covers. And also, I did get into El Piloto Fantasma, again with a Duran cover. I got about 20 issues of that last year. And to close out the fun stuff of the year, I was so happy to get a Wings Comics number one from the UK from the early 50s. Happy collecting. Good luck in finding what you're looking for. Put those sets together and may 2021 be phenomenal for all your collecting. Wow. All right. So Indo horror, well, Indonesian is a whole nother thing. To, I, I am scared of the Indo market. I, I've said it to you several times. I've said it to some other guys. We had Joey on for an interview one time and yeah. that market, I it's too intense for me because I don't understand it. It's so much bootleg, so much art that looks familiar, but isn't familiar. So much stuff that is just gorgeous and scary all at once. It makes you want it, but feel icky about it at the same time. <laughs> and Jim, Jim has gone down the Indonesian horror rabbit hole. I mean, he he is I, I've been watching his posts, you know, he'll he'll get hauls and stuff. I mean, some of those covers are just freaking nuts. That one with the lady with she's just like a bottom half and her whole top portion of her torso is just missing. Like amazing stuff. Um it takes a special collector to get into the Indo stuff though, just like you said, John. Um, you know, it's not it, it, Indo it's, it's, is the heroine of foreign comics. That's all I'm gonna say is you get to Indo. You've hit the end of the line, and you were just yeah, you were just mainlining this shit. Yeah, it's like 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 you. you how do you explain Brazilian it? horror isn't crazy? Is it enough good for enough? You. It's not crazy enough for you, or or some of the other shit. And then you're like, okay, I got to go down the Indonesian rabbit hole. <laughs> and Indonesia is is vast. I mean, I've said it before. Uh, you could write books, books, not book, books in plural on the Indonesian comic market. Jim, thanks for that. Your taste is absolutely impeccable in horror. Uh, I mean, I love the horror stuff. The horror stuff's always trying to draw me in and I try to push against it. But when we see stuff like that, it just it makes you wanna makes you wanna get into it. Thank you so much for your vid.
Yes. I, I don't even know. We've seen such a variety already. I'm excited. What's next? What do we got next, <laughs> my friend? Okay, let's go to Maria in Portugal. Hello, everyone. I'm Maria from Portugal. And I saw Matthew post on the group. And I decided to send my video and tell you all about what was my first comic. That comic that I decided to, mm, I'm going to start to collect foreigner comics. So I found this in Portugal um, five years ago. I spent three euros and I couldn't believe it when I saw the comic and I thought to myself, oh my God, three euros. So, oh, <laughs> that's like five bucks. La Maza. And that's it. This was the first comic in my collection. Three euros. Happy. Bye. Talk about oh talk about speaking quietly but carrying a big stick. Yes. Five euro, or three euros, five dollars for La Massa. The uh one eighty one. Oh man. <laughs> there's fantastic the 300 way to just say, I'm in. Yeah, there's the three hundred set and then there's the one eighty one set. Yeah, the one eighty one is is the 300 is the gateway. The 181 is the guys that go, all right, I'm in. Let's go big. Let's go big. Yeah. I mean, that that book, uh, I can't remember the last time I saw Spanish 181 sell, but I think it was it was a decent copy, and it was into the three or 400 range, I think. Easy. And um, Maria is a wonderful, wonderful seller. So she not only collects, she also sells. I think on eBay and on YouTube, she's Portuguese comics. I don't remember. Uh, Maria, put put it comment on this on this video and put in uh, your eBay and your link and all that stuff. But I bought a bunch of books from her. Um, she's a, a wonderful collector and one of the girls. We need to get the girls involved. And um, she's so cool. She's so cool and lucky. <laughs> a hell of a way to start. That's a, I know it's just like really that's like oh man that's that's a huge book and and it looked like it was in a damn nice grade too so she's yes. she's well on her way and I know that she builds she also builds a a, a Star Trek set which is different I always look because she she's always yeah, the gold key the gold key Star Trek there's a, a particular issue in that run that she likes and she's been building that set for a few years and I always go to it and go oh cool there's Maria because you can. Pick her out because you you know she's the Star Trek girl. Um, cool. Thank you so much. That was awesome. All right. Okay. What we got next on the uh, the show here. What one of my foreign one of my brethren from the Foreign Comic Calling Podcast. We're gonna go to Eric. Hey, this is Eric Miller from the Foreign Comics Calling Podcast, and I'm Happy to submit my three-minute video to the uh, much revered uh, John Z and the venerable Matt Roybal. Uh, congratulations on a, a good year for Global Comics uh, Safari. Uh, I'm going to share, I mean, like any foreign collector, I have a bunch of highlights and it's kind of hard to pick one. But my favorite book, I'm like a whisker away from getting, I think, the full set. So I'm going to just show that uh, probably quickly. Um, and I'm talking about Fantastic Four 52, First Black Panther. So here is the U.S. copy. Um, it's not graded, but it's probably a three to four, um, but proud to have it. Um, West German. I always say West German, thanks to uh, Doc Scott, who corrects me every time. Uh, German version. I kind of like the inking on this one just because you can see him more clearly. 
Um, yeah, some of the other books he kind of fades out. Um, here is my La Prenza copy, which I'm super stoked about. Cool. This one recently. Yeah, that one ain't, uh, ain't no joke. So Mexican. Um, here is the Novedages, so also uh, Mexican. Um, this is the one where they, you know, he has just the cowl, uh, which was the original design. So that's a bit of a, an interesting uh, variation. So, uh, and then I have a bunch of uh, European ones, and I mix these up all the time. So I'm not even going to say, I'll just say European, Scandinavian countries, right? So Fantastica Fryan. Um, and feel free to comment and smack me down. I'm not going to say the wrong country. Uh, <laughs> I confuse the Scandinavian all the time. Uh, Sorthy Panther, right? Uh, again, these are the ones where he kind of he kind they kind of lose the detail of him, but uh, proud to have that one. Uh, this Warte Panther, I'm sure I'm saying that, I'm butchering that, but proud to have this one. Uh, Die Fantastic. This is the German, German. one, right? Uh, this one I have multiple copies of. So here's one, two, three of that one. Um, two of which I have available for sale if anybody's interested. Um, <laughs> here's uh, the uh, Vertice uh, version from España, right? Uh, which is awesome. Same deal. I have two of those. Try to, that's what happens when you try to upgrade and you're a fanatical collector and so forth. This is a German reprint. Uh, this is a US reprint with the alternate uh, Kirby cover. Um, I don't have that black and white initial cover. That one is insanely priced. Uh, here is an Italian, Fantastico Quattro. Um, again, I have multiple copies of that. Two, three. Uh, True Believers. Reprint, and then the reprint in Marvel's Greatest Comics, which I also went a little nuts on. This is the Monday version, so I have one. Two, <laughs> three, he's, he's as OCD as I am on the crow. Jeez. Four versions of that. And then wrapping up, I have uh, French. Oh, wow. Um, French. And yeah, the French is cool. The other French, which is awesome. And then an epic collection, because why not? If you're going for it, go for it, right? Um, <laughs> I'm about to start looking for these in foreign languages, too, which is uh, madness. So uh, thanks for letting me show my book, uh, my books. I have the Pence copy. That's the one that I'm a whisker hair away. From. It'll probably arrive in the mail tomorrow just after I film this. But um, I did spend quite a penny on that, and that should be uh, quite a pence on that. So that should be arriving <laughs> <laughs> any minute now which i think completes my ff52 so i went over my time but hopefully that's not uh, they're not going to kill me that thanks uh uh john and matt uh continue success looking forward to future episodes stay safe everyone well you can't go wrong with the black panther oh, hold on no you cannot so um, you can't go wrong with that book that's an amazing book to chase i mean black panther is at this point, iconic. I mean, one movie and a couple cameo appearances in the screen, and he is just kind of been elevated. So it's just, it's an impressive set. It is. And Eric Miller is a set builder. Set building is in that guy's DNA. And, you know, that's what we see, you know, uh, in, in the foreign comic part of the hot foreign edition part of the hobby is, you know, as you start building sets, you just become obsessed. Sort of like you and the crow, exactly like you said. And I got to tell you, Eric, I need an Italian one of those. I will be uh, giving you a call, my friend, and see if well, I can pick up an Italian. Well, I've, I've learned. You're a set builder. Yep. I'm uh, whatever shiny and I want to buy. <laughs> now, sometimes I get to a set because somebody shows me enough of them and I get close. I'm like, all right, I'll buy the other couple. Yeah. But I don't have that intention of this is the book I want and I'm going to build that set. And that's what we base Global Comics Safari's kind of main episodes off of, because I think it's the best way to kind of see it all. Yeah. But I, you don't have to buy a set. I mean, you may just like one great cover in the run. You may just like it. Like, that's Vertice, the Spanish one, stuck out. It was just all so different that yeah. I'm like, that one I love, or the French I love. But, yeah, you know, I, some people want to build everything of a favorite cover, and others just want to build the coolest things they see. Yeah. Works both ways, man. Yeah, there's no there's no right or wrong, and, you know. And the, the beauty of, of of this part of the hobby too is that you know it's so relatively new. 
in many ways, I believe, you know, uh, opinions are like, you know what, everyone's got one. But my opinion is that set building is actually relatively new. If you look at the hobby as from when it started back, you know, long ago, um, you know, and, and there's some real crazies out there that build global runs, which that's really getting crazy. But <laughs> I will I will say this. Um, on that set, that Laprenza that he has, dude, that's a tough, that's a tough freaking book in any I've grade. never seen anybody show it. It's a tough book in any grade, man. I mean, that's no joke. He probably paid a pretty penny for that Laprenza. That's why he you could tell he was like. I'm really proud about that one. Yeah, that, that the Laprenza first Black Panther is no joke. It is tough to find, big time. You'll yeah. see ten novidades before you see one Laprenza. All right. Okay. From one one of your one of your podcast mates to another to another. Yes, we're gonna go to another foreign comics calling podcast mate, and, and, and this guy's a true mate. Hi Matt. Hi John. Um, I got. I've got three minutes to show you my pickups of 2020. Um, okay, I've even got my stopwatch going on here. So <laughs> I feel the blabbering. Um, Somebody takes it serious. About six or seven books. This one took me a long time to get. Um, they're just not really out there. Uh, so it's my first favorite book, and we're looking at. Alan Class, Tales of Suspense, number one. Uh, I had that in my watch list on eBay for donkeys a long time. And one finally came up and I went for it. Right, three minutes, three minutes. Okay. So, other pickup. Ooh. Oh. And I have to uh, kind of laugh inside a little bit when people say to me that. Alan Class books aren't worth that much money. Um, some are, some aren't. <laughs> these weren't. And obviously, <laughs> with that one comes this one. That was hard to find. To be fair, they were all hard to find. Love your show, by the way. Uh, it's just what I need. Whenever I find the time to actually get down to, to watch and listen. I see a trend here, Matt. I see a trend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. Full run of uh, Creepy Worlds. All the appearances. Definite trend. Well, I've got just over a minute and a bit. It's a bit of rush. This one, I have to shout out big, 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 big thank you to Robert Fordham. Thanks, Rob. Boom. <laughs> Our man, Rob. Yep. It's a beautiful book and a lovely thick slab. Love it. Awesome. And I also find out that an earlier book had been reprinted. Oh, I'll come to that in a bit. Sorry, time is ticking on that one. Wow. Half a minute to go, guys. And that one. Do you love that cover? Right today was. Mm -hmm. I found out that that one got reprinted further on down the line. <laughs> so there we go. Thanks very much for allowing me three minutes to show you my pickups for 2020. Great show. Bye. Wow. I do love Ken. He is, uh, man, he has, he has taste. And I, I mean, he is the king of Alan class. He is the king. Yep. And those early Alan classes, dude, that creepy world's FF1. I don't know who's saying they're not worth money because that thing is pricey. And, you know, I feel like in the last couple of years, UK collectors have re-looked at that Allen class stuff and said, hey, I guess I should pay more money for the, I mean, you know, we have Pence, Pence copies, right? We have the Pence copy, actual foreign variants, price variants. The Allen class, I think for a while, kind of got some short thrift. Yeah, because they're not the originals. 
They're, yeah, but they are hard to find. They are not necessarily that easy to find. Like Ken was saying, it could take you quite a long time to build a run of those. And he, I think Ken's goal is to, at least for the most part, the first maybe couple years of Allen class, he's trying to get every single Allen class issue that he can, that he can find. And I, I mean, don't know if he's, the closest thing I can compare it to, like for an American to understand, is if they printed runs in the Golden Record reprints. Yeah, I mean it's the first reprint. It's closer to the original date. I mean it's not far. Very close. And probably in a significantly smaller number because we're talking the UK, mm -hmm. where the Golden Records was aimed at a pretty broad audience. So I mean, take that and slash the print run smaller, and that and that's what we're talking about, sort of. Yeah, and then do a I would go. I would venture to. I I don't know this for sure. There's Allen class experts out there, but I would venture to say that the print runs could probably, if you just simply look at population, a fourth of what the American print run was, if not less, or yeah. you know, one fourth. Um, I think you're probably high, and I'm probably high. So, I mean, Ken, you are the Allen class master. You're our mate from the UK, and uh, I'm glad you like the show. Um, yeah, that was uh, impressive. All right. So we have one last video. And, one last. Uh, kind of a kind of a big thank you for participating. We appreciate it. I mean, uh, this yeah, guy, we don't recognize him. I don't know where you've been for the last couple years. Yo, what's good, comic fam? Big shout out to the foreign collectors community. We're a rare breed. We are after some of the scarcest collectibles in the comic market, and most of the community doesn't even really recognize it and know it exists. But we've seen in 2020 and years leading up to last year that this market is emerging. It's getting the respect it deserves, and it's because of every single one of you. So I'm going to show you three of my favorite pickups, courtesy really of this community, helping me source them, helping me buy them. Shout out to all my friends who are living in countries all across the world. It's a very special part of this collector's market and it's one of my favorites and I am proud to be part of it. So the first comic we got to chat about is a book from Greece that I secured from my homie. And you know what? I put a request in to help me find it because I was not finding a copy for years. We're talking about a Greek copy of Hobgoblin's first appearance in ASM 238. This comic is stellar. It's smaller and it features the first appearance of a classic Spidey villain. But one of the coolest parts about the foreign comic market is that they were just doing what they could with IPs. Whatever they had, they were sandwiching titles together. And in this one country, in this one case, in this one story, one editor happened to take the first appearance of Hobgoblin and couple it with a Bronze Age comic book, Iron Man 55. And that is why this copy will never see the hands of a CGC grader because I need to be able to open it up right to the center, whatever, wherever that center is where you have one issue on one end and the start of issue 55 on the other with no cover to Iron Man 55. So happy that didn't happen. And you have the first appearance of Hobgoblin on the left and the first appearance of Drax on the right. Only in the foreign market, this kind of stuff happens. It's a beautiful thing. Double key. A constant reminder of just how well deserved it is to look at these keys with higher respect more now than ever. I want to also give a shout out to Matthew Royball. You all know him. This dude is a freaking leader of this community. And, you know, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share some of my finds with the community. We have a book that I have been hunting for for probably five years that I secured because of him and a member out in Denmark. We have Hulk annual number one, a original cover that was done by Steranko, one of my all-time favorite Silver Age comic artists. And his original version was redone by Marie Severin because his face, according to Marvel, looked too gross. It looked too ugly. And when he told me that in person a few years ago, my, my heart kind of hurt a little bit. My brain was shattering just a little bit because I was thinking how much respect I had for this comic, how much I put it on a pedestal to know that he didn't even do the face of the issue that I knew. What a fan I am for not even knowing this. And this is years ago, right? Well, I knew that I had to 
secure the original art. And I was stunned to find out that in foreign markets, they not only did new additions, and we should continue that as a side note, let's continue calling these additions. Every time you call one of these a reprint, you are, I, in my opinion, hurting the branding of the foreign market because these are not reprints. These are additions. These are something more akin to the first print than anything that would be considered a variant. They wouldn't just re print them with a new edition. No, they would sometimes do original covers and sometimes they would keep original artwork. And in this particular case in Denmark and a couple of other countries, but Denmark in particular is the one I wanted. We have the original Steranko Hulk and all of his ugliness because you know what? He's holding up his title. And if he was holding up his title, his muscles would be strained. He would be perspirating. He would be about to be breaking his back, right? So he would be ugly. And that's why I'm so stoked to own this comic book. And I hope to have it signed when COVID ends. All right. So the last one on the list, I'll make this one quick. I've been hunting Spider-Man keys, um, non-canon Spidey for quite some time. And it really took into high gear in 2020. So the comic that I would like to share with you is one of many that I purchased. We have El Sopendente Hombre Araña, issue 156, cover done by Jose Duran. This dude is someone that I've gained so much respect for in the last two years, being part of this market a little bit more heavily and learning even more now that I'm diving into it and seeing the art and seeing the pages in hand. It's stuff you can't even find on the internet. So getting it in hand is just another level, especially considering that it's getting to you from another country, the fact that it even exists is difficult to fathom, which makes it even that much cooler. But this particular book, Jose Duran did something that he didn't know he was going to do. You can't imagine him thinking about the comics code, right? That's not a thing in Mexico at this time. And he decided to do a scene where someone was shot and that there was blood coming out of his head. Like there is a pool of blood on this cover. And this right here is the first time this was ever done on Amazing Spider-Man. The first blood on an Amazing Spider-Man cover having been done by accident, probably. I would love to ask him in person, but making a key out of a non-canon Spider-Man run that I respect so much. So that one is the main pick. I also got a handful of others, but that's for another day. And for content on my channel, you guys are awesome. Have a happy new year and keep the hunt alive and strong and keep making this community one that anybody can come into. The more open we make it, the more easy we can make it for people to understand by providing information and insight, sharing our finds and, our, and, and things that we learn, the larger we can grow this community and the easier it will be to find these gems that are out there still just waiting to be uncovered. Thanks, Comic Fam. All right. Well, that was awesome. Thank you, Comic Tom, for uh, stopping by, man, and sharing your picks. That was amazing. Yeah. And uh, and those books that he picked, whew. great books. Some great books. I mean, great, great books. First Blood on a on a Spider Man cover. That's a. I, I have two out of three. I have not found that Greek book yet. Oh, the double key. Yeah. Yeah. The you know the Greeks. You know, they, they didn't plan. I don't think they planned it. They just no. somehow made a double key that, you know, a lot of people don't realize. And, you know, if you were to put that book in a slab, you and you were to properly notate, properly notate it, you would have both those key notes included, even if it doesn't have the cover. Double keys only happens in the foreign foreign market, baby. Yes. So definitely there. Thank you all for sharing. We appreciate all you sent in the videos. We appreciate you kind of showing us the cool things you found because we get to show it all the time. Um, I don't know. It was fun. I appreciate the audience participation. You kind of get to meet some uh, characters that you see in the Facebook group and put some faces to names and some exactly. collecting habits to it. So we'll have to try and do it again and uh, keep the community aspect alive, man. We This community is great. I I love everybody that is in there. They're always friendly. They're always sharing stuff. They're always willing to kind of, hey, you're looking for something? What do you need? I'll try and help you. Exactly. And then that's the beauty of the group, right? You could be the newbiest noob on, you know, on whatever, or you could be a YouTube comic star, or you could be, you could be whatever. Just come in, 
do your thing and people are going to help you find that stuff and uh uh meant uh put a link in the in the of the group in the the notes for sure john um it is the foreign comics group official fcc magazine on facebook find us there find us at cbsi as well uh global comic safari and the tales from the flip side channel i uh, this was a blast i love this show absolutely we will be back with you very soon and uh thank you all for joining us man